Hey, everybody, guess what? We're back for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This time, it's episode 77. And as many of you already know, this is the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's show about handling recovery and rehabilitation with your martial arts training. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and excellent apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you that are listening again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more or buy over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are on a whole different website, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Now, from either site, you can sign up for our great newsletter. And you should, because we offer exclusive content, discounts, and all that to subscribers. And it's also the only place to find out who's coming up as a guest on the show. Now, like I said, today's episode is going to cover recovery and rehabilitation with respect to your martial arts training. Now, let's be honest. Injuries happen. If you've been training the martial arts for any length of time, you've probably gotten hurt. Now, whether it's from not blocking, as most of my instructors would have said, you know, taking a shot that was a little bit too hard or, or placed where maybe it, it wasn't intended, or maybe it's from some kind of overuse or something like that, you're probably going to get hurt. At the very least, you're going to get sore. If you're never getting sore, you're probably not training hard enough. Let's be real there, right? Now, sometimes that soreness is coming from overtraining, Sometimes it's related to your age. Uh, sometimes it's poor movement patterns, differences in your body. You know, if, if you are carrying around more weight, you know, if you're an overweight person, you're going to deal with some things that a lighter weight person won't deal with. Now, some people, and this does still seem to be pretty persistent in the martial arts, will tell you just to train through it. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the best idea. And we're going to cover why as we get a little bit deeper into this. But, you know, that's really an old school attitude. And anyone that knows me as a martial artist knows that I'm a traditionalist. I love deep stances. I love the approach of what a lot of people would call old school martial arts. But I think that with new science, with new understanding of the way the body works, I think we can become not only better people and less injury prone, but better martial artists because we understand the body much better than we did a hundred or so years ago when most of the martial arts that we're practicing were being developed. If you consider other physical pursuits, sports mostly, they embrace modern science with respect to the body and recovery and rehabilitation and all that. And as martial artists, we don't do that. Um, and I'm not saying that you don't, I'm not saying that your martial arts school does not. And if you do great, you're ahead of the curve, but I believe that the more we can look at things this way, the more that we can approach martial arts training and recovery with an eye open to what modern science is telling us, I think we can become better practitioners and we can push our art and our place within the martial arts world forward. I think that's a good thing. Now, before we get into any specifics, I need to be really honest and throw a disclaimer out here. I'm not a doctor. I have absolutely no formal medical training. And the majority of what I'm going to tell you today comes from personal experience with my own injuries, some of which are things that I dealt with for years. The rest of it comes from personal research, and I'm constantly researching how all this stuff fits together, all these pieces. Uh, those of you that that know me or have listened to many of the shows know that martial arts is not the only thing that I do. Uh, I, I'm a martial artist. I'm engaged in CrossFit. Uh, I've spent some time with parkour, uh, gymnastics, and I'm always looking, how do these things not only fit together personally, but what can I learn from one that I can translate over to another? So remember, I'm not a doctor. Um, 
if you do something that I've told you here and it doesn't work for you or you die, I can't be held responsible. Okay. Uh, if you can't agree to that, please stop listening. <laughs> right. Um, so let's talk about some general recovery strategies. Now, recovery isn't when you're, you're injured. Recovery is just generally what you should be doing on a daily basis, right? When we train, we're breaking down our body. And most of us are used to this concept when we think of it from uh, the perspective of weightlifting. When you lift heavy weights, it breaks down the muscle and it's as the muscle repairs that you become stronger. Now, that's a really narrow view of it, but it still has some translation over to the martial arts. When we train, when we train hard, we're beating ourselves up. We leave class, we're sweaty, uh, maybe we're sore, and there's a satisfaction that comes from that. But in order to repair properly so you can train again soon and with some intensity, you've got to have an eye towards recovering. Now, the number one place that recovery happens is when you're sleeping. The body heals itself mostly and most efficiently when you are asleep. And I won't get into the science of that, mostly because I don't fully understand it, but I know it is true. I've done enough research to know that it is true. And if you think about your own life, yeah, it, it's what happens. If you consider you hopefully sleep somewhere around eight hours a day, you feel better after sleeping eight hours, if you go to bed with something kind of banged up, a little sore, than you do after eight hours of being awake, even if you're not moving around a lot, right? So that's the body healing. Sleep, you got to make it a priority. I'm sure some of you out there sleep four hours a night and you think that's enough. And maybe it is to be functional, but it's not the way your body is built. So I'm not going to argue with the amount of sleep that you're getting, but I'm going to encourage you. Uh, when I train people, when I coach people, sleep is one of the first things that I talk to them about. A lot of you out there, martial arts is not the only physical thing that you do. And we have this mentality, again, especially in martial arts, especially in traditional martial arts, that more is better, go hard, push through the pain. And that's not always the best idea to leave your martial arts class to go into the weight room or to go rock climbing or something like that. And to do that three, four, seven days a week doesn't give your body the opportunity to recover. You've got to find some balance with the physical inputs to your body, the, the exercise, if we want to lump it under that category that you're doing. So find some balance, recognize, be willing to dial it back. You can't do everything, right? And I struggle with that. I need somebody telling me that on a daily basis. Food. I'm not going to get into my rant, uh, but I get pretty worked up about food. And when, when that subject comes up and the amount that people spend on food or rather that they don't and the quality of food. So let's just put it out really simply. The better quality food you're eating, the less work your body has to do to process it. And the healthier you will be, the easier your body will recover. If you live on food that comes out of a box and you wash it down with alcohol and that's your life, that is your choice. And I won't take that away from you, but that is not going to give you the best platform, your platform is your body, for your martial arts training. Now, as sort of a subset of food, there are plenty of things that you can eat or kind of work into your body that have almost a medicinal effect. And a great example, and I'll just give you one, the spice, turmeric, pretty common in a lot of Indian food, is an actual uh, anti-inflammatory. It's pretty powerful. And so those of you out there that may find yourself using something like ibuprofen after class to handle some of these minor aches and pains, adding things like that into your diet. And again, there's plenty more, do some research. That's going to help. Um, I'm not going to say it's going to eliminate the need for something like Tylenol or Olive, but if you're doing it right, take it enough, it should reduce it. Okay. And the last thing I'll throw out 
for what you can put into your body is water. Most of us don't drink enough water. We've been hearing that for decades. Um, check in with yourself. Be honest. Are you drinking enough water? If you're not drinking enough water, it is the easiest, cheapest thing you can do to set your body up for success that doesn't require making a big lifestyle change, right? Sleep's going to have the biggest impact, but water is pretty darn easy to change. Now, of course, if time and finances allow, there's a lot of professional help to keep your body in a general recovered state. I'm a huge fan of acupuncture. I see an acupuncturist. Massage therapy is great, or even not so much the massage therapist, but a general relaxation massage practitioner can be really beneficial. Chiropractic care can be really effective. Uh, if you find a good chiropractor, they can be your best friend as a martial artist. I truly believe that. Uh, there are some techniques, some soft tissue techniques that can be really helpful. Uh, Graston, G-R-A-S-T-I-N, is one of them. You might want to check that out. A lot of chiropractors offer Graston. Uh, it's a way of scraping out uh, externally. You know, it's not painful, maybe uncomfortable, um, dealing with scar tissue. I'm also a big fan of structural integration, which is sort of a massage technique. Sometimes it's called rolfing. And check out any of those, all of those. Um, I have all of those done on at least a monthly basis. And it's huge. It's hugely important to my body. And I believe strongly that those things that I just laid out, the food, the water, the sleep, the people that I see, not only set me up for uh, being physically able to handle a lot of martial arts training, but just life in general. I don't tend to get sick very often. I don't tend to get injured very often. And it's because I put a strong priority on those things. But let's say I start slacking on one of those things, or I'm training a lot more than normal. I, I, I get sore, right? You know, overuse is kind of the category that we want to think of that as. If I'm doing too much and I'm not balancing it out on the other side, I may have some overuse issues. Some people might call them injuries. And some ways to recognize that, you know, are you having soreness that takes longer than normal, you know, rather than a day or two, maybe it takes a week. Uh, maybe you're feeling really run down or sluggish. The same amount of sleep isn't isn't bringing you back to normal. You're using extra caffeine. Uh, you're eating more than you normally would. You know, there's a lot of different symptoms there for recognizing overuse, but I'd be willing to bet that most of you out there have experienced it. You, you know, you know when you're in that place. And I think the key is not ignoring it. A lot of people, again, martial artists, we're really good at saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to push through. We've got that commitment. We've got that drive instilled in us as white belts. And we don't like to take a step back very often. But this is where it's really important. When I talked about recovery, I used the word balance, and I feel really strongly that balance is a great way to think of it, especially as martial artists. We're taught to keep our balance in our stances. We're taught to balance our various techniques when we're in a, a self-defense or a sparring situation, so we're not relying on one thing too much and giving our opponent an advantage. Whatever it is, balance is pretty core to what we do as martial artists. And all of the strategies for dealing with overuse really involve bringing things back into balance. So the first thing to do is accept that the things that you're doing for your general day-to-day -day recovery have not been enough. If what you're doing for recovery is adequate to balance out your training, you will not experience overuse. Okay. Now, there may not be enough hours in the day. And you've got to be honest with that. You've got to be honest with yourself. So accept that, take a step back. And the first thing to do is be willing to take a break. Take a day off, take a week off, take a month off. There were several years where I was taking the month of August off. I think I've mentioned that on the show before. And as I look back, 
I'm okay with having done that. It was really important for me, but I know at the time I felt really anxious about it because I love martial arts, but I was feeling a little burnt out. My overuse was just as much mental as it was physical at that point. But I knew those several years when I came back in September, man, I was all over. I was pumped to be back. I was excited and my training went so much better. So don't be afraid. Take a little bit of time off. You probably want to talk with your instructor, whether it's because you're going to take some time off or because you're feeling like that's not going to do it or you're not willing to do that or you want to try some other strategy. It's important that your instructor or your instructors know what you're going through because you may need to make some kind of modification to what's going on. If if overuse is manifesting itself as uh, a physical thing, you know, your right shoulder is a lot more sticky or sore than it normally is. And maybe you want to dial back what you're doing on the right side of your body. Well, you probably want to tell your instructors so they don't think that you're become suddenly lazy with half of your body. I don't know, but be open with that. And hopefully your instructors are willing to accept that. And if they're not, well, maybe there's a whole other conversation that needs to happen that's outside the scope of this show. Other things you can do dealing with overuse, get some extra sleep. If you're feeling run down and you've been sleeping eight hours a night, there's no magic formula for eight hours. In fact, there have been studies done removing people from day-to-day life, putting them in rooms without access to the sun, you know, no windows, and just letting them go about their life and seeing how much do people sleep naturally. Human beings are wired for somewhere around 10 hours of sleep a night. And if you think of other mammals, dogs, cats, how much of the day do they sleep? It's a tremendous amount. Sleep is really what sets us up for success in life. And it should be probably the first, I probably didn't even order these well. I'd say it's the first thing you should do if you're feeling like you're overusing your body. Now, if you're not doing that or you want to add extra layers, get some better quality food, take a look at what you're eating, throw more water in there, you know, really ramp it up. Be willing to spend a little bit of extra money to get some better food into you. Those professionals that I mentioned back in the recovery section, any one of those extra visits, get another massage, things like that. Those are all really, really going to help. And let's take a second. Let's talk about massage, okay? Because I feel like there's this stigma with massage. Oh, um, massage, I don't, I don't want to go see a massage therapist or someone that does massage because, you know, I'm, I'm a big tough person and I don't need to spend money to make, uh, to have someone make me feel good right? That it feels like there's this disconnect for a lot of people. Um, a good massage therapist will leave you f- feeling like you've just left training. You've worked, you are sore, but you feel accomplished. Some of the worst pain I've ever endured in my life was at the hands of a great massage therapist, but incredibly effective. Good ones understand the body in a way that Maybe we don't as martial artists, but we can understand. And I think everybody should spend the time and the money, find a good massage therapist, and see them frequently. Sometimes we experience things that are a little bit beyond overuse. They're beyond getting tired. They fall into the realm of injury. Now, minor injuries could be aches or pains that really go beyond you know, just a day or two. It's not just something that happened at class and, oh, you know, I I clashed shins with somebody. No, we're talking about stuff that continues on more than a few days and it starts to limit what you can do. It gets in the way of either your training or your life. Uh, Maybe you've got reduced range of motion, something like that. And when you get to that point, there's a decision to be made. If you ignore it, it's not going to get better on its own or it's extremely unlikely. And in fact, it could escalate to something a little bit more severe. So as soon as an injury starts to pop up, that's really the best time to address it. When you're dealing with an injury, the number one 
thing to do is to figure out what is the source of the problem. Now, if you clash shins with someone and you've got a severe bone bruise, okay, that's pretty obvious. We know what happened there. Maybe you get some shin guards, maybe some whistle kick shin guards. But if it's something else, you know, your shoulder's not working quite right and it's creating pain when you do a particular movement. Maybe you don't know what started all of that. And there are a couple ways forward here. But again, you've got to figure out what's causing it. And that's often going to require some professional help. Again, whether that's a, a, a chiropractor or your great massage therapist that hopefully you've already found or someone else, uh, your instructor may be really good at helping you identify these things. But spend the time, figure out what's going on and start putting together a plan. Talk to your instructor. If you're going to keep training through this, figure out what it is that you're going to stop doing to allow the injury to get better. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing outside your training. If you keep banging into that problem, you know, if you, if you don't stop the, the input that's creating the injury, you're wasting time, you're wasting money on trying to heal it outside of your training. Now, I'm going to say something that's probably going to upset a few of you out there. Pain relievers are not cures. Ibuprofen is great. But if you find yourself taking a bunch of ibuprofen to deal with an issue, you're being foolish. You're working yourself into a hole that as you age will get worse and will potentially keep you from martial arts training earlier than if you addressed the problem. Please don't do that. Please don't hide your injury, your symptoms with something synthetic or, or even something natural. You know, don't, don't put tablespoons of turmeric into your body and, and ignore the fact that you're doing something that's creating that pain. Find the source, deal with it, and hopefully you can move on. So when we think about that, that, that piece that I just said, the idea of, of not just kind of barreling through the pain of, of covering it up by taking a handful of pills, for a lot of us as martial artists, that doesn't quite line up with our experiences or what we've been taught. But a lot of those attitudes go back quite a ways, and we understand the body a lot more than we did. And honestly, regardless of your goals as a martial artist, whether you're there for fitness, whether you're there for self-defense, whether you're there for personal development or, or some other reason, risking major injury by pushing through a minor injury doesn't line up. It doesn't help you towards whatever that goal is. Now, if you're in competition or you're in the middle of a test, sometimes those lines get really blurry. Uh, I, I've certainly experienced injuries both within the realm of a black belt testing and within competition. And I don't regret doing that. But when I'm training, I know the difference between good pain and bad pain, as one of my instructors used to put it. And I'm not going to just keep pushing through some bad pain so I can do a few more repetitions of something that I could do at another time. Now, if you can't find the source of the problem on your own, find somebody who can. I think I already mentioned that. Um, you may bump into a professional who's pushing surgery. Uh, at this stage, that's rarely required. I'm going to push back on that and say you probably don't need surgery if you're dealing with a minor problem. It's almost always excessive. Now, when we get into major injuries, which we'll talk about in a minute, that's a whole different story. But ultimately, it's your body. And remember that it's your body. And you're the one who is taking responsibility for whatever's happening. So make sure that you're comfortable with whatever the plan is. Build yourself a team, your instructor, professionals, family, friends, wh whoever it is, and get their input, but 
be willing to make the decision for yourself at the end of the day. Now, minor injuries are going to happen. We already agreed on that. So how do we prevent injuries? One of the first things we can do is called prehabilitation. Instead of rehabilitation, bringing things back to a normal place, we can do extra work to prevent the need for that prehabilitation. Something like weight training. That can be really, really instrumental in helping us handle the the knocks, the getting banged around. I mean, there's a lot of other great benefits that weight training can bring in for us as martial artists, but injury prevention is a great one. Now, if you have some kind of acute issue that you know keeps popping up for me, I've got some shoulder stuff that I deal with. And one of the things that I do to help deal with that, some of my prehabilitative work involves using kettlebells. Uh, I've also had a couple sprained ankles. So there are some ankle exercises that I do. And I'll even share that one with you. I spend some time walking on my toes, on my heels, and on the inside and outside of my foot. It um, gently stretches and also strengthens the muscles and the ligaments in the ankle. And that's been really, really helpful for me. One of the other keys to preventing injury is making sure you're using proper form. And I think I've mentioned this on the show before. One of the things that I see when I travel around is push-up form. As martial artists, we do a lot of push-ups, but most of us seem to do push-ups wrong. Uh, elbows flare out and all kinds of other things, and that that's really a bad setup. And I see a lot of rotator cuff surgeries waiting to happen when people are doing push-ups. For the record, how should you be doing push-ups? Easiest thing to think about is your index finger points forward the entire time. Try and keep your elbows closer to your body. So let's talk about major injuries. What's the difference between a major and a minor injury? The minor injury, you could push through it. You can grit grit your teeth, buckle down, suck it up, you know, a number of other cliches. Major injury, you really can't. You might be able to do other things, but you're not going to be able to force through that pain. Uh, Oftentimes, it's not a pain issue. It's a function issue. Now, if you experience some kind of major injury, don't don't ignore it. Um, get help right away. That usually means a hospital. I mean, we're not talking about, oh, I sp- excuse me, sprained my ankle. We're talking about I collapsed to the floor and it felt like the fire of a thousand suns in my knee. Okay. That's the kind of stuff you want to go get checked out right away because you don't know. It's not worth the risk. So get some help. Now, Injuries in this category rarely just get better. You're going to need some help. You're going to need a doctor. There's probably going to be some physical therapy involved, something like that. And accept that that's part of it. That's part of being a martial artist is that sometimes these injuries are going to happen and we're going to have to approach that recovery, that healing with the same attention and intention that we would any other aspect of our martial arts training. If you want martial arts to be a lifelong pursuit, you've got to be cautious here. You know, a lot of us are really anxious to get back to our training, but pushing too far too fast. Yeah, maybe you're getting back in, you're trying to get in a week or two early, but you might set yourself back weeks or months, or you may end up doing damage that can't be repaired a second time. It's not worth that risk. Again, whatever your goals are as a martial artist, that doesn't line up. Be smart. Of course, this was really a quick look. Uh, Actually, this ends up being a little bit longer of a Thursday show than we usually have. Hope that's okay with you guys. As I got into putting together the outline, got a little bit long, but this was some good stuff and I wanted to make sure that we covered it all. Now, Are there common martial arts injuries that you've experienced or people in your training are dealing with and you'd like some advice? Or maybe, you know, you want to share with us what you're doing for recovery, prehabilitation, or you'd like some additional strategies for things that you're experiencing? Or maybe you just have parts of your body that are prone to injury and you want to know how other people might handle it. Best thing to do, shoot us your comments. 
uh, whether it's on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Username's Whistlekick. Or you can leave us a comment on the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, under this episode, episode 77. And don't forget, you can also find all of our episodes on YouTube, and you can leave a comment on episode 77 there. Hope to hear from some of you. So if you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic for one of these Thursday episodes, go ahead, let us know. Fill out the form over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay up on everything we're doing. And you can learn more about the products that we carry over at whistlekick.com. That's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.